it'll only be for two days. It's against my better judgment, you know. I don't know how I'm going to tell Danny. I'll just have to think of something. Well, all right. Yes, I I'll meet you at the station this afternoon and pick up Grandpa. Oh, you're welcome, Aunt Martha, but promise me, please, just two days. All right. Bye, dear. Hi, beautiful. Oh. oh, you don't know what a pleasure it is to be home, you know? Anybody that doesn't appreciate his home should go away from it like I've been away for a few weeks, boy. <laughs> yeah. Then they'd appreciate it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful to be home, honey. Yeah. And you realize I got a whole weekend to do anything I want? Huh? Uh, why don't you go away for a couple of days? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, oh, honey, I mean just to some vacation spot where you could play golf and, and really relax. Relax. I'll relax right here. I just want to drink in the peace and quiet of my home. Don't be silly. Well, you know, darling, I'm going to be awfully busy this week, and I won't be able to spend much time with you, and I thought maybe you'd like to have a house guest. <laughs> Bite your tongue. <laughs> well, all right. Oh, dear. Uh, Danny. Yeah? I just got a phone call from my Aunt Martha in Boston. Don't tell me that butterfly is gonna barge in on my first weekend. Oh, honey, nothing like that. She's going to Philadelphia. Oh, wonderful stuff. Yes, she's going to her daughter's wedding there. Oh, good. Well, yeah. That's nice. <laughs> Danny, uh, remember I told you about my grandpa on my mother's side, the one who lives with Aunt Martha who's going to her daughter's wedding in Philadelphia? Remember? Yeah. Well, what about your grandfather and your mother's side who lives with your Aunt Martha's going to her daughter's wedding in Philadelphia? <laughs> oh, well, you know, Aunt Martha takes care of him, and she has to watch him every minute. Why? He eats. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to worry about? Well, honey, he's on a very strict diet, you know, just baby foods and milk and stuff like that, and he's always trying to smuggle pig's feet and corned beef and cabbage and everything that's bad for him. I don't blame the poor old guy. Baby food, wow. Oh, but honey, his doctor says that just one meal of that kind of food that he tries to smuggle into himself, just one meal, mind you, and it will be the end of Grandpa. Just like that. That's serious, mm -hmm. huh? Oh, honestly, honey, it's terribly serious. Mm. And he just won't cooperate. My poor Aunt Martha, the tricks he plays on her. He's 84 years old, and he's like a fox, just exactly like a fox. Like the time he, he got a long package and he said it was a new cane. He said a friend had sent it to him. New cane? Uh-huh. You know, it wasn't a cane at all. What was it? It was a liverwurst with a handle on it. <laughs> That's pretty clever. <laughs> and then there was the time he, he sent his shoes out to be repaired. Don't tell me they came back with a pastrami inner sole. Oh, honey, don't be silly. They were stuffed with sardines. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a real character, all right. Oh, honestly, darling, you'd think he was trying to dig his own grave with a knife and fork. You know, my Aunt Martha can't leave him alone for a second, not for one single second. Was well, she taking him to Philadelphia to the wedding? Well, not exactly. You see, uh, not exactly. Oh, boy, it sure took you a long time to make the circle, but you finally made it. Oh. Well, he is not coming here, bud, so get it out of your mind. Oh, honey, it's Look, just honey, for three days. weeks, seven nights a week, never a night off, two shows a night, I worked like a dog, and all that time I kept dreaming about coming home and enjoying the peace and quiet. And if you think I'm going to spend my first weekend playing nursemaid to a delicatessen addict... <laughs> You got another thing coming. Oh, honey, please. No. N O. Oh, man. No. Honey. Oh, darling. Honey, I'm exhausted. It? Why don't you send him to a rest home for a couple oh, of days? Oh, honey, you don't know Grandpa. You can't send him to a rest home. They won't take him. <laughs> why not? Well, the last rest home that had him, why, they had to close down for two weeks afterwards. What for? Rest. <laughs> I don't care. That's what I came home for, rest, and I want to get it. Oh, honey, please. No. I, but, darling, I Nine. told them I, I had Nish. to, I had to say something. I uh-uh. Oh, get the message? <laughs> okay. I get the message. Oh, well. Oh, darling, I knew you'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, you're so sweet. 
a wee to cooperate. Well, give a guy a chance to say it first. <laughs> You're always so sweet, and you cooperate so well, darling. All right, oh. all right. And, honey, you will help to keep him on his diet, won't yes, you? Yes, yeah. of yeah. course. Okay, darling. Tell me, honey, mm. what would you like best with shredded chicken? Strained carrots or strained peas? <laughs> <laughs> You mean I have got to stay on his diet? Honey, you said you'd cooperate. Oh, but honey, baby food? Oh, come on. Well, darling, you don't want to see that poor, dear, sweet old man sitting there having to eat all that baby food while you're sitting there and eating horrible, juicy steaks and fried potatoes and lemon meringue pie. It would be cruel. Well... Okay, but there's just one thing. Yeah. Who's gonna burp me? <laughs> Come on in, Grandpa. Hi, sir. This is my husband, Danny. Danny, this is my grandpa. How are you? Nice to see you, sir. So this is your husband, eh? Yes. Sturdy looking lad? Looks like he's been eating good. <laughs> Lots of roast beef, leg of lamb, pot roast, all going into you, eh? Well, yes, sir. And gravy, uh, and potato pancakes, <laughs> and uh, uh, apple fritters, <laughs> and, uh, and strawberry shortcake, <laughs> and... Kathy, I don't like him. <laughs> now, Grandpa, you just stop it. You come over here and sit down. There, you, you remember little Linda, Grandpa? Hello, Gramps. Well, what do you know, little Linda? My, my, how you've grown. Just look at you, all pink and white, like a peppermint stick candy. You look good enough to eat. <laughs> <laughs> a little too heavy for him uh, to carry. Uh, Grandpa, this is Rusty. Hello, Grandpa. How are you, Rusty? Say, is it true you want Stash to knock worse than the chandelier? Ross! <laughs> Why on earth he ever said a thing like that? <laughs> uh, you like a little refreshment after that long trip? How'd you like a drink? <laughs> I mean, uh, a little carrot juice on the rocks, or uh, a skim milk martini? I see, they warned you, eh? Well, it's for your own good, Grandpa. You want to live, don't you? You doggone right I want to live, but I don't want to live on baby food, young man. The proper time to be a baby is when you are very, very young. Grandpa, if you'll just cooperate. Cooperate? I'm the most cooperating man on two legs you ever saw. Well, do you call it cooperating? Sneaking indigestible food into the house all the time? Sneaking? Me? Oh, oh. so Martha's been filling your heads with a lot of lies about me, eh? You won't have any trouble with me, so just take it easy. Oh, that's good, Grandpa. That's a load off of our mind. Would you like to go up and rest? Rusty, take Grandpa's bag up to the spare room. Let me help you off with your no, thing. No, no, no. Don't bother. Don't bother. It's quite all right. Well, that muffler, you're going to catch a cold. You better take it. <laughs> now, you let go of that. Grandpa gets off his diet even once. It could be the end of him. So we've got to watch him. He's very tricky. He's a foxy old guy. He's had a lot of experience smuggling in this indigestible food, you know. So just keep your eyes open. You understand? Yeah, I'll get it. Some shirts for John Malloy. Oh, that's Grandpa. I'll take them. Thank you. Is that for me? Oh, here's some shirts here for you. Yes, I always order my shirts from a special place in New York. Uh -huh. I like the way they fit around the collar. Oh, wonderful, fine. Anyway, like I was telling you kids, you got to look out. Of course, you're just children. I don't expect you to catch on all of his tricks. But you got to watch because anything could be a trick. Anything. You mean like the box of shirts, for instance? <laughs> sure, even the box of, sh box of shirts. <laughs> Morning, Gramps. Morning, Gramps. 
Come on, let's sit down. I want to have a little talk with you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't this a beautiful view? Look at that, look at that down. Look at that little tugboat pulling that great big barge. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah. Well, come on, let's sit down. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Grandpa. You can sit down anytime. You can always get a view like this. Danny, my boy, I want to have a nice confidential talk with you. Come on, let's sit down. Well, why do we have to sit down? Can we talk here by the window? I suppose so. I, uh... Kid, I can't help it if your grandfather is a foodaholic. <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat the stuff you can't sing about it. Besides, I gotta rehearse. Oh, darling. And he's not here anyway. What are you worried about? What? He's out in the park walking with the kids. Oh, honey, do you think that's safe? Look, I gave them explicit orders to hang on to each arm, not to let go. Now, they know the score. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, I hope you're right. You know what a trickster he is. Daddy, what? we lost him. What? what? <laughs> you lost Grandpa? No, where? Well, we did exactly what you told us, Daddy. We each had him by an arm and we never let go. Right, Linda? Uh-huh. I sat while we were feeding the monkeys. <laughs> oh, then you did let go. Yes, but only for a moment. Then we grabbed hold again right away, one of us on each arm. Well, then how did you lose him? Well, we were walking along and we looked up and you know what? What? We were holding the wrong old man. <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah, it was some other old man. You mean he switched old men on you? Oh, I don't know how he did it. And the wrong old man said it, it was the easiest buck he ever made and walked away. <laughs> Danny, what are we going to do? Oh, let's go down to the zoo. I'll bet you ten to one he jumped into the pool with the seal so somebody threw him a fish. <laughs> no time for Joke. I'm not joking. Wouldn't surprise me at all. He's in a cage with the monkeys eating peanuts. There's a couple of delicatessens around there. We'll find them. See you later, kids. You expecting someone? Yes. Get that stuff on the table before they get here. You mean all this stuff is for you? Ooh. <laughs> Corned beef and cabbage. Chili con carne. Pickled pig's feet. And a glass of strawberry pop. <coughs> that ain't a meal. It's suicide. <laughs> Grandpa, stop! Shame on you. Uh, now, now, you two people go out of here. Oh, not without you. It may interest you to know that I have credentials in my pocket to prove that I'm over 21. Would you like to see them? No, no, we'll take your word for it. Well, now that it's proven that I'm of legal age, I'm entitled to all the advantages that the Constitution guarantees. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of pickled pig's feet. <laughs> pig's feet? Oh, Grandpa, really? Oh, Chili Chil con carne. Corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage, Grandpa, with your tummy. Tummy? I haven't had a tummy since I was four years old. <laughs> oh, you're a difficult one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your relatives worry about you, they love you, and you treat them like they're your enemies. They are my enemies. <laughs> Look at your Aunt Martha. She knows how I hate baby food, but she feeds me on, on, on squash peas and squash lettuce and squash everything. Why, she even fed me on squash squash. <laughs> now on, I'm going to eat everything I want and drink. Oh, Grandpa, you're 84 years old. I know that. I'm 84 
and I spent 80 of my years eating and drinking the things that I want. I like eating and drinking. Stand aside and give me room to eat. If I'm going out, I'm going out in a blaze of gluttonous glory. <laughs> Would you kindly take off your hat? I'd like to have as much dignity as possible. All for goodness. <laughs> now, Grandpa, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Look, look, this, this is not worth it. Will you kindly let go of my arm? Grandpa, I tell you, this isn't worth it. No, it isn't worth it, Grandpa. Kathy, I don't think you understand what I mean, dear. I, I agree with him. I think he, he should go out in a blaze of gluttonous glory. Oh, Danny, what are you saying? I'm saying that I think he's right, and I agree with him. Well, if you agree with me, let go of my arm. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it still isn't worth it. <laughs> I mean, this isn't worth it. Look, if I were going to trade the remaining years of my life for one good meal, it wouldn't be for this junk. Come to the point, will you? Look, let me make the point. Now, put that down a second and listen to me. Now, if I were going out in a blaze of gluttonous glory, Gramps, it'd have to be with the best. The finest food prepared by the finest chefs. The very best. Would you see what I mean, Kathy? Oh, oh, sure. I it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Certainly not. Now, listen, Gramps. It'd have to have the right atmosphere. And look. If there's one thing Fine Schreiber hasn't got, it's atmosphere. <laughs> Call this an atmosphere for a, for, for a final repast? No, it has to be a, a beautiful restaurant with a table spread with the finest of linens and candlelight and champagne. Oh, yes. I'd say, waiter, champagne, please. Gordon Rouge, 52. 52? Well, that was a good year for champagne. Well, that was a good year for me, too. <laughs> I was eating regular then. <laughs> Champagne, eh? Champagne with caviar. Then we would have some brook trout sautéed to a nice golden brown. Of course, the brook trout would have some white wine. Let me see Riesling, I think. Johannesburg, 46. That was a good year for uh, Rhine wine. I like beer. What's a good year for beer? <laughs> <laughs> Will you just take it easy? Let me set this menu. And now for the main course, we have pheasant. Young, succulent pheasant. Basted with the finest of and rarest of sauces and served on a flaming platter. <laughs> and of course, it gets you, huh? And of course, with pheasant, we're gonna have to have some more white wine. Well, we've had white wine. Uh, what's the best year for straight gin? <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, not with this meal. And now for dessert, we'd have cherry jubilee, little brandy sauce, of course, then a cafe noir, a fine liqueur, and top the whole thing off with a nice big $1 cigar. Now there, buddy, is a meal worth dying for. And I take my word for it, it'll kill you. <laughs> I see what you mean. It'll be kind of cheap of me to walk up to the pearly gate on pig's feet. Exactly. <laughs> well, tell me, where will I get this meal you've been talking about? Where else? Paris. Paris? Paris, France? That's the place. Mm, cost a lot of money to get there. Yes, it would, Grandpa. I don't suppose you'd be willing to lend me the money. Oh, Grandpa, how can you ask a thing like that? You want somebody to pick up your tab for your final meal? It'd be like going to heaven on credit. <laughs> well, uh, but where am I going to get the money? Well, uh, you could save it out of your pension, Grandpa. Well, it would take me years to save it out of that puny little pension of mine. Oh, I know, but it, it would be worth it, wouldn't it? Of course it would be worth it. You people must think because I'm on soft food that I'm soft in the head, too. Huh? Saving my money for years and still staying on my diet. And then when I'm ready to go to Paris, you'll tell me that they've just discovered that the finest restaurant on the universe is in Mars. <laughs> and then you'll tell me I'd better wait until they have space travel. <laughs> what kind of a fool do you think I am? I'll tell you what kind. A stubborn, selfish one. And I'm getting sick of this whole thing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Blind to the people that love you. Blind to the fact that there's a lot more to life than just your stomach. Well, for my dough, buddy, go ahead and eat. Oh, Danny. Kathy, skip it, honey. This is silly to fight in a hopeless battle. If he doesn't get away with the trick, now we'll do it to Aunt Martha in Boston. What's the difference? Oh. Go on, go ahead, eat. Oh, honey, you can't stand this. Sweetheart, we're going to watch him for the rest of your life. There's no way to stop this man unless you want to put him away somewhere. You want that? No. Oh, well, then no. butt out. Let me handle it. Go ahead. Go ahead, eat. You mean uh, I can have my last repast in peace and quiet? You certainly can. And you're not going to stop me? Not going to stop you one bit. There you are. Good. 
Well, right ahead. Let him alone, Kathy. I suppose you realize that this meal would finish me off. Yep, we realize you it. You know that, don't you? We know it. And you're still not going to stop me. No, sir, not going to stop you. Go right ahead. I believe you really mean it. Yes, I do. <laughs> what kind of family have I got? <laughs> Trying to kill their old grandfather. Well, I'm a son. Doggone it, you people aren't playing fair. Where's your sportsmanship? What? Letting me down like that. What do you mean, letting you down? We're just doing what you wanted us to do. Yeah, you did more than that. What was that? You've spoiled my appetite. <laughs> I knew it all along. He's nothing but an old fraud. Oh, honey, and I should have known it, too. Why, why, no one could actually consider eating a meal like that. Look Pickled that. pig's feet, chili con carne, corned beef and cabbage, and strawberry pie. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Okay. <laughs> you are Grandpa, hat, coat, and Aunt Martha will be here any minute to pick you up. Do you have to tell her? Yes, I'm afraid so, Grandpa. All right, all right. Go ahead and tell her. Tell her that I never intended to eat any of that stuff. Go ahead. Ruin my life. Oh, now, Grandpa, how can giving Aunt Martha a little peace of mind ruin your life? Because she won't stop me anymore. So what fun will I have? <laughs> well, what fun is there making that woman worry herself sick over you? My man's got to have some kind of fun. I'm too old for any other kind. <laughs> it's a pretty silly hobby, if you ask me. Well, a man has to have one. There's Aunt Martha now. Hello, Hello Kathy, Hello, darling. How are Martha. you? How was the wedding? Oh, it was real pretty wedding. Nice to Hello, see you. Hello, Daddy. Darling. Looking well. <laughs> You're looking well, Father. Martha, there's something I've got to tell you. Danny, please, please. So, he's been up to his old tricks, has he? Well... What did you sneak this time? A slice of salami or a dill pickle? Well, actually, <laughs> it, it, it's about that. Well, it's a good thing I'm back. Yes, siree. Because I'm the only one the old fox can't fool with his shenanigans. You know, the only way to beat this old schemer is to always keep a step ahead of him. <laughs> Keeps a body busy all day. Oh, it makes life more interesting, too, I'll admit. <laughs> <laughs> After Grandpa, it was so peaceful in Philadelphia, I nearly went out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was it you were trying to tell me? Well, uh, what I wanted to tell you is that you... You got to keep uh, one step ahead of this, Fox, uh, all the time. <laughs> You're telling me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. Well, Martha, it's wonderful to see you again. Now, don't you start soft-soaping me. <laughs> Let's get started. Bye, After Kathy. you, Martha. Bye, Bye. Aunt Martha. Nice Thanks. To see, see you. you again, Come and too. visit us. Uh, oh. <laughs> 